Hi everybody and thank you again for watching another episode of Gaffer and Gear. Well today we're not doing a gear review, we're doing a back to basics and we're going to talk about one of these devices. So this is a voltage detector, more commonly known as a volt stick. So as you can see it can detect voltage. So how can I possibly do a whole episode on one of these? Well here's the thing, if you use one of these incorrectly you can spend a lot of time looking for a fault that doesn't exist. All right, so let's do a quick overview of how these work and we're also gonna cover off some safety things at the same time. Okay, so I've got a power cable here and it's got voltage on it. If I run the volt stick along it, you can see that it detects the voltage. Now, does that mean that the light should power up when it's plugged into this? Not at all. That doesn't mean anything. All this is doing is telling me that there's voltage here. It's not telling me if there's enough voltage to turn the light on and it's also not telling me if the cable is correctly wired. All we know is that we have voltage. Now I've got another cable here which doesn't have voltage on it. And as you can see, the volt stick does not activate. So does that mean there's no voltage on here and this is safe? Not at all. It could mean that my volt stick is broken. It could also mean that I have a flat battery and I could be using this wrong. So when you don't get a reading, don't make the assumption that there is no voltage there. Now before you go to use a volt stick, you should always check that it's working. Now, if you're working in a house, this is really easy to do. Just go up to a light switch. Now, what if you're in a situation where you don't have access to another power circuit that you know works to test if the volt stick's working or not? Well, there is another type of electricity that can set the volt stick off, static electricity. All right, so that's a double-edged sword. So that means that we know this is working, but that also means that static electricity can set off your volt stick. So if you're testing a cable and you touch it and it momentarily goes beep, like it did then, that is actually static electricity. In this case, it's coming off my floor here, which is EVA foam mats. Maybe you're on carpet and you're moving around and generating a bit of static and getting a little false reading like I got there. What you wanna hear is a continuous reading. Now the most common situation in which people use a volt stick is if you've got a light that's suddenly not working and you come along and see if you've got voltage going through to the light. Now here's a scenario in which uh, that can trip you up. So if you've got a very heavily insulated cable, so have a look at this cable compared to that one. It's quite a bit of size difference and your battery is a little bit flat in your volt stick, you might not necessarily get a reading if you touch the cable in just the one spot. Okay, so inside the cable, you've got multiple cores. So you've got your active, you've got your neutral, and in some countries, you've also got an earth connection. Now those three cores are twisted or running in a spiral down the cable to give it more tensional strength. All right, so let's say this is our active cable, and that's the one that if I touch the volt stick on, it'll make a noise. If that's rolled around underneath, and I'm touching from the other side, I might not get a reading, okay? So especially if the battery's a little bit flat in the volt stick. So when you go to take your reading, if you don't get a reading, move the volt stick around a little bit, okay? Because you might pick it up here, you might pick up the voltage here, for example, but not over there. Now let's go back to our scenario where the light stopped working and I've pulled a volt stick out to help me figure out what the problem is. Now, regardless of whether I get power or not on the cable, the volt stick isn't going to tell me what the exact problem is, but it will help me decide which direction I need to go looking in. It'll help me narrow down my search. All right, so let's do this scenario. We've got voltage. So what does that tell me? Well, if I've got voltage, I can't possibly have tripped a circuit breaker. If I tripped a circuit breaker, we wouldn't have voltage going to this. So I know that I don't need to check the fuse box. Now, even though I've got voltage, that doesn't mean that the fault is necessarily in the light. It could still be a power connection problem. I will still check that all of my connections are solid because you can have voltage, but not have a power circuit, okay? So in order for the light to turn on, you've got to have power coming out of your connection, out of your power point, going through the light and back to your power point. Now, for example, somebody might've kicked or knocked the power cable and it is sitting on an angle. So your active might be making contact, 
but your neutral might not be making contact, in which case you can have voltage but not have a power circuit. So regardless of if I get voltage or not, I'm still gonna go through and check all of my connectors. Now let's do the opposite scenario. And again, this is the only light on set that is mysteriously turned off. All right, so I've tested my volt stick, I know it works. I run it across the cable and I'm reading no voltage. So that indicates to me that the problem isn't with the light. I don't need to be messing around in here trying to get it to work. I need to investigate why there's no power coming down this cable. Most likely somebody's kicked the cable out of the wall outlet. So once again, this didn't tell me what the problem was, but it gave me an indication of do I need to look here or do I need to look somewhere else? Okay, so you're probably starting to get the idea that these are not the be all and end all of electrical testing. There's a lot of problems with them, but here's a scenario in which these are really invaluable and you should have them in your kit if you're working in the lighting department. And that is if you've got a light fixture fitting that's in a ceiling and you're gonna change the light globe or put a new light bulb in. Now, the first thing I do is turn the power off at the light switch. But here's the thing I've discovered over the years. Just because you've turned the light switch off and maybe the light globe that's in there has turned off, that doesn't mean you don't have voltage running through the terminal here. So how could you possibly have voltage going through a circuit when the light bulb has turned off? Well, what tends to happen is in older houses, the light switch might have got broken and they've replaced it with a new one but the house owner didn't want to spend money on an electrician to do that. They just went down to the hardware store and bought a brand new replacement switch. Now, when they installed the switch, they got the power cables the wrong way around. So instead of the power turning off at the switch, the power is going up to the light bulb in the ceiling and then coming back to the switch and turning off. Now, I just want to show you something here. So if you have um, the cable into the light socket the wrong way around. That is a bit of a safety issue because if it's wired correctly on an Edison um, screw like this, the active, the dangerous part of the power, should be on the end of the pin here, buried really, really deep into the socket. But if it's wired the wrong way around, the active is on your screw thread here where you might be able to accidentally touch it when you're installing the new light bulb. So what I do is, before I install a light bulb, is I check having tested my uh, volt stick, that there's no voltage present in there, okay? And if I get a voltage reading, then I'll go to the fuse box and turn the power off going to the light circuit before I go to install any light globes. Now, just to clarify, if you've already got a light globe in a socket, you don't need to take that light globe out to check for voltage. You should be able to detect voltage through the globe. Now, the next scenario in which I use volt sticks is if I wanna check if a three-phase outlet is wired up correctly. Now, I don't have any three-phase power in my workshop here, so I'm gonna run you through the theory on a single-phase uh, power outlet. All right, so if I insert my volt stick, and this is a volt stick that is designed to insert into a socket, if I insert it into the active, it should activate. If I insert it into a neutral, it should not activate. And if I insert it into the earth connection, it should not activate. So what that tells me is I've got power coming up the active, but not coming up the neutral and not coming up the earth. All right, so what we're gonna do here is do the same process here. So I've got the power outlet turned on. I've got my three actives, which in Australia are L1, L2, L3. I've got my neutral in the center and I've got my earth down the bottom. So I'm just gonna play around with a bit of post-production trickery with the sound, but this would be the scenario if I was testing it. Now, if you've got no power in your location, you can use a volt stick across the circuit breakers in the fuse box to check if there's actually power coming into the location. Now, finally, here's a scenario that can really trip people up. So I've got one power cable here that's running off the power grid, and I've got another power cable here that's running off a portable generator. Okay, so let's have a look at this power cable first. Okay, let's have a look at this power cable that's running off the portable generator. 
it can be very hard to find voltage on this. So I've really got to search for it. If in doubt, go into the end. But even then, sometimes you might not get a reading, okay? So portable generators and volt sticks, not a great combination for testing. Well, that's another episode of Gaffer and Gear done. I hope it was informative. Now, I'm just gonna close off with uh, this volt stick here. This is one I use. This is a Greenlee. Uh, this is made in the USA. Best volt stick I've had by a long way. So um, things I like about it, or more to the point, problems I've had with other volt sticks. Uh, other volt sticks have had big uh, sensors at the end that don't fit into sockets. Okay, so you can't use them to test a three-phase socket, for example, whereas this one fits nice and snug in. Um, the power buttons, the power buttons at the back of it, okay, when you turn it on and off, it makes a noise, so you can't accidentally turn it off. Most other volt sticks will have a button uh, down here to activate the volt stick, or they'll have a, a slider on-off switch, and in both those scenarios, when you put it into your tool belt, it can accidentally turn on and flatten the battery. The other thing I like about this is it has a flashing light and it also makes a noise. So in the scenario where I'm on a loud set, maybe I'm on a factory, uh, working in a factory, or I'm on a music clip and there's a lot of noise and I can't hear the volt stick, I can see the light flashing. So all up, this is my favorite volt stick, but look, you don't have to necessarily buy this one, but my big advice is don't buy cheap, buy the best one that you can afford to buy and it'll last you a very long time.